Good morning. Yeah, good morning, ma'am. How are you? Fine, you? I'm good, thank you very much. <laughs> One moment, please, uh, Miss Lourdes, okay? Okay, no problem. Thank you. Good morning, Adnan. Good morning. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. You can start, uh, Adnan. Um, and the okay, no, okay, okay, no. The student okay, no problem. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, could you please enable the screen sharing? Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, welcome uh, class to uh, the new uh, session. Uh, we have three topics today. Uh, the first one is uh, alcohols, and the second one is uh, models of molecules. Mm -hmm. And the third one is hydrocarbons. So we will uh, discuss these three topics in detail. So the first one is you guys are familiar with uh, the name alcohols. And uh, we will discuss the chemical aspect of alcohols that what are alcohols, uh, how they are prepared uh, in, and we will relate the uh, terminology of alcohols with chemistry. That uh, in chemistry, what uh, basically alcohol means and then we will go to the models of molecules. In models, uh, we will study that how many different types of uh, uh, ways or methods do we have uh, from where we can explain the structure of molecules, right? We have ball and stick, we have uh, space filling, and we have, uh, uh, we can say pipe model. So different types of models that we will study. And then finally, uh, we have a topic from hydrocarbons and we will discuss that what are hydrocarbons from the organic chemistry point of view. So we are starting our first uh, lecture or first topic that is alcohols. So uh, if we uh, start from the definition, so we would say that, uh, I think I need a pointer here, so that would be easy. Okay, so alcohols are organic compounds that contain uh, OH group. So this OH group is also called hydroxyl group attached to a carbon. So in alcohols, we will have a carbon atom and uh, OH group will be attached to that carbon. So this is how we identify that we are looking at carbon. This is the chemical structure of carbon. You need to remember this. So common uses of alcohols, alcohols have various applications in industries like pharmaceuticals, paints and solvents. And they are also used in uh, beverages in like beer, wine, and liquor. So all sorts of uh, uh, drinks that uh, people consume, uh, they, it contains uh, alcohols, uh, most of it. So importance of alcohols in chemistry. So alcohols are one of the most important functional groups in organic chemistry. And what is the functional group? Uh, it is OH, hydroxyl group, uh, with various properties that make them useful in uh, a variety of applications. So we will see shortly that uh, how alcohols uh, are used in chemistry. So 
these are the uh, structures of alcohols. As you can see here, we have methanol. Uh, this is the simplest alcohol in chemistry uh, with the formula CH3OH. As I told you in the previous slide that uh, the OH group will be attached to the carbon atom. So if you can see here, so uh, here uh, we have carbon in the middle and then we have OH group on this side. And uh, uh, you, you remember this, that carbon uh, can make four bonds and we have uh, uh, four bonds of carbon, uh, three with hydrogens, this is one, two, three. And the fourth one uh, is with oxygen. Another type of alcohol is ethanol. Uh, the formula is C2H5OH. And why we call this molecule uh, alcohol? It is because OH group is also attached here with the carbon. So this is the basic principle that, uh, to identify uh, alcohol molecules. But this is how you uh, identify uh, basically that what alcohol is. Okay, so this is one propanol and this is one butanol. These are different types of alcohols that we have. So now we are um, moving towards the structure of alcohols, that what is the basic structure of um, alcohols, right? So the basic structure of alcohols, uh, they have a general formula, ROH. So R can be uh, the alkyl group, we have studied this. So let me revise it for you again, since this is our new class. So R is CH3, okay? So our C2H5, all these sorts of uh, um, molecules or radicals, they will combine with carbon and then carbon will be further attached to uh, the OH. Okay, so the explanation of uh, hydroxyl group. So the hydroxyl group OH is a polar uh, compound. Uh, or a group that makes alcohols soluble in water. So if you add alcohol in water, uh, alcohol will dissolve, okay? It is not like, uh, it is not like uh, oil that, for example, sometimes when we add oil or most of the times when we add oil to water, uh, it will form a layer um, on the surface of the water and it will not dissolve in it, okay? So uh, alcohols are soluble in water and uh, what is the reason behind the solubility of the uh, alcohols in water? Uh, that is the hydrogen bonding. Uh, the water molecule OH, uh, uh, H2O, it makes bonds with uh, the OH group of the alcohols and uh, the molecules are separated and the alcohol eventually dissolves in water. So examples of common alcohols, we have ethanol, methanol and isopropyl alcohol. So now uh, naming in chemistry, we know that whenever we have a molecule, we have to name it so, so that we can identify it, we can study it. So IOPEC naming uh, rules for alcohols, right? So uh, you, you, it is not that you, you, you just give it any name. So there are rules and how do, you, how do we do that? How do we give names to alcohols? Uh, it is by the OH group is assigned to uh, the highest priority and the longest carbon chain containing the hydroxyl group is numbered starting from the end closest to the OH group. So this is how we uh, name alcohols. Uh, for example, look at this molecule. So how many carbon atoms do we have? Uh, three, so this is our longest chain. One, two, three. And, uh, the, and we start from counting from this side where the OH group is attached. So the OH, the hydroxyl group is attached with this carbon. So we will start counting from here. One, two, three. Uh, we have three carbons. It means that this is propane. But when we uh, try to name the alcohol, we will remove the NE part, the E part from, from propane, and we will replace it with OL, okay? So uh, propane will become uh, propanol. And, uh, Similarly, here we have two uh, carbon atoms, one, two. So this is ethanol. And here we have one carbon, so this is a methanol, okay? So what if we have four carbons? So CH3, CH2, CH2, another CH2, and then OH. So this will become butanol, okay? So this is how the chain grows and the name, uh, they, they, the names change with it. And if we have a five carbon uh, uh, molecule, 
it will be called pentanol. Explanation of common names of, for alcohols, methanol is uh, also known as wood alcohol or ethanol is known as a grain alcohol. So alcohols have been used by, the, by humanity for thousands of years, for four or five to 6,000 years. Uh, humanity, humans have been consuming alcohols and it is alcohol that uh, sustained societies and uh, um, alcohol was uh, uh, free of germs and that is why it uh, nurtured the civilization, okay? So uh, it is prehistoric, that is why uh, we have different common names such as wood alcohol, uh, alcohol was used to prepare from wood, ethanol and grain alcohol, etc. So now we are moving towards the, the properties of alcohols. So in properties of alcohols, we have uh, alcohols have a high uh, boiling point uh, or a high melting and boiling point. And why is that? Why do we say that alcohols have high melting and boiling points? And that is because of the hydrogen bonding. So you need to remember this, uh, that uh, uh, the, the, the reason that uh, alcohols are uh, have a high melting and boiling points. That is because uh, the hydrogen bonding between the OH group of one molecule and the oxygen atom of another. Okay, uh, in, in, in the case of water, uh, we have oxygen. So if we talk about the solubility uh, in water and organic solvents, alcohols are generally uh, soluble in water and organic solvents due to their polar nature. What do we mean by polar nature? Uh, it is the electronegativity difference between uh, the hydrogen atom and the oxygen atom, or we can say that the carbon atom and the oxygen atom. Oxygen is the second most electronegative uh, uh, element of the periodic table with the electronegativity of 3.9. And uh, what happens is that when something makes bond uh, with oxygen, uh, any atom which has a lower electronegativity, uh, oxygen will pull uh, the or attract the shared pair of electron towards itself. It will pull the electron pair. And what will happen to when, when oxygen will pull the electron uh, or the electrons toward itself, it will, it will, it will get a, a partial negative charge, okay? So I hope this point is clear uh, that what do we mean by polar nature? This is how the polarity works. And we will see, uh, we will study this in, in this lecture in the coming slides in detail. The boiling and melting points, uh, this, this point has been discussed. The boiling points and melting points of all alcohols increase with increasing carbon uh, chain length. For example, if you look here, methanol, uh, it has only one carbon, right? So the melting and boiling point of methanol uh, will be lower as compared to ethanol because ethanol has two carbons and the uh, melting and boiling point of ethanol, it will be lower as compared to propanol because uh, propanol has three carbon chain, three carbon atoms. So the carbon chain is increasing. So this is why we say that uh, the number of uh, the, the melting and boiling points increase when we increase the number of carbon atoms. So this is a very important point. You need to remember this. Uh, sometimes in exams, they will give you questions and they will give you four uh, different types of alcohols and they will ask you that, can you identify that which of these alcohols uh, has uh, the lowest, elect, uh, lowest melting and boiling point? So you will have to select the alcohol with the lowest carbon uh, number. So I hope this point is clear. So now we are moving towards the preparation of alcohols, that how do we prepare uh, alcohols? And uh, there are different methods uh, for the preparation of alcohols. Uh, the first one is that alcohol can be prepared by hydration of alkenes. Uh, alkenes are organic compounds that have a double bond uh, and they are hydrocarbons. They contain carbon and hydrogen. And what do we mean by hydration? Hydration is the addition of water. And we will see uh, the chemical reaction related to this. Uh, reduction of carbonyl compounds. By reduction, we means that we, we, are, we are adding uh, hydrogen to it. And fermentation of sugars. And fermentation is a process which is carried by, which is mostly carried by anaerobic uh, bacteria. 
uh, in uh, oxygen deprived conditions where you do not give any oxygen to them. So hydration of alkenes, alkenes are reacted with water, as I just said, that it is the addition of water in the presence of uh, an acid catalyst to form alcohols. So you will have alkene, you will have water, and you will have acid that will catalyze the reaction, uh, that will speed up the reaction. What do we mean by catalyst? By catalyst, we mean as any substance that has the power to uh, speed up the chemical reaction. So reduction of uh, carbonyl compounds, aldehydes and ketones, uh, they are uh, different types of uh, organic compounds. And they, these are the names of the functional groups. Aldehyde and ketones can be reduced using reducing agents like sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride to form, to form primary, secondary alcohols and tertiary alcohols respectively. And fermentation sugar, uh, yeasts are used to convert sugars into ethanol and uh, carbon dioxide. Yeast, yeast is a fungi and uh, yeast can grow in uh, anaerobic environment where the concentration of the oxygen is very low. So this is the hydration reaction, which we discussed in the previous slide. As you can see here, uh, we have alkene. Uh, I told you guys that alkenes contain a double bond and we have a double bond between these two carbons. And uh, when it reacts with the uh, water, this is H2O. And in the presence of uh, acid, uh, acid is represented by the hydronium ion here. And uh, what will happen that the OH group will be attached to, to the one carbon and this hydrogen will be attached to another carbon and this double bond will be converted into a single bond. As you can see here, we have two carbon atoms. Uh, we have hydrogen on one and we have carbon on the other. And uh, this is alcohol. Why do we call this alcohol? It is because uh, the carbon is connected to OH or we can say that OH group is attached to one of the carbon atoms. And what is the name of this uh, alcohol? Since we have two uh, carbons, so we call it ethanol. So I hope this point is also clear. If you have any questions, you can uh, write down in chat or you can unmute your mic and you can ask. Uses of alcohol. So uh, how alcohol is used in our daily lives. So a common use, uses of alcohols in our daily life, alcohols are used in a variety of products like cleaning agents, uh, perfumes, or personal care uh, products, right? Uh, you, you may remember uh, uh, two years back when we were in a pandemic, we are still in the pandemic, the coronavirus. So, uh, you know, there were instructions from WHO that you have to sanitize your hands and you need uh, alcohol to do that, okay? So um, um, cleaning agents, perfumes. So if you are using a perfume, so if you look at the ingredients, so you will find that uh, it contains alcohols. Industrial use of alcohols, alcohols are used as solvents, right? So what do we mean by solvents? Uh, like we have many different types of organic compounds that we need to dissolve uh, and or different types of other compounds. So uh, we use uh, alcohol so that we can dissolve those compounds into uh, alcohols. Uh, alcohols are used as fuels as well because uh, they can burn, they have the capacity to, to, to burn and to produce energy. And uh, uh, another use of uh, alcohol is that uh, it can be converted into various important chemical uh, products. So it is a feedback, or we can say that it is a feedstock for uh, different types of chemicals in the chemical industry. And uh, what are the medical uses of uh, alcohol? Alcohols like ethanol uh, are used as antiseptics and uh, uh, disinfectants. So I, I hope this point is also clear. Uh, whenever someone goes into a surgery or uh, someone uh, has uh, uh, an infection or someone gets wounded, so you put or you rub alcohol on the wound so that uh, you can make it antiseptic. Antiseptic. What do we mean by antiseptic? Uh, we are basically killing the germs and we are making it germ-free. 
So now we have uh, three different types of uh, uh, structural types of alcohols. We have primary alcohols, we have secondary alcohols, and we have tertiary alcohols. So in the primary alcohols, uh, we have the OH group is attached to the carbon atom that is only connected one carbon atom. This is a primary alcohol. And a secondary alcohol is the alcohol where uh, the OH group is attached to the carbon atom, which is further directly connected to two carbon atoms. And tertiary means three. Uh, tertiary alcohols have the uh, OH group, the hydroxyl group that is attached to a carbon atom and that is attached to the further three uh, carbon atoms directly. So these are the uh, pictures or, or the structural representation of the uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols so that you can understand. Uh, this is the primary alcohol, ethanol. As you can see here, that uh, the OH group is attached to a carbon atom, and this carbon atom is directly attached to uh, one carbon. This is why we call this a primary alcohol. And this is the secondary alcohol. And why do we call this uh, a secondary alcohol because uh, this carbon, uh, which is attached to the OH group, it, it is directly attached to two carbon atoms, one on the left-hand side and the other one was one on the right-hand side. So this is why we call this uh, a secondary alcohol. And then we have a tertiary alcohol. And uh, why do we call this a tertiary alcohol? It is because uh, the carbon, which is attached to OH group, is directly connected to three uh, carbon atoms, uh, one on the left-hand side, the other one on the right-hand side, and the third one uh, down here. So you can see that carbon has four bonds uh, in all of these uh, molecules. So this is the tertiary alcohol. So what is the name of this tertiary alcohol? We call it tertiary uh, butanol, or, uh, and uh, this, the name of the secondary alcohol is uh, isopropanol, and the name of the primary alcohol is ethanol. So I hope this point is clear. If the OH group is uh, attached to the carbon, which is further connected to the first carbon or one carbon, so that will be uh, primary. It is If it is attached directly attached to two carbons, it will be secondary. And if it is directly attached to three carbons, it will be a tertiary alcohol. So I hope this point is clear. Uh, we can move to another, another slide. So now we have the oxidation of alcohols and the what do we mean by the oxidation of alcohol? This is basically uh, the chemical reaction that we use. So oxidation is the loss of electrons or, uh, an, uh, or an increase uh, in the oxidation state of an atom or molecule. So different methods of oxidizing alcohols. Alcohols can be oxidized using oxidizing agents like potassium permanganate, uh, KMnO4, and chromic acid. So these are the formulas. Uh, this is uh, potassium permanganate, and uh, this is chromic acid, H2CrO4. Uh, uh, what is Cr? It's chromium. And what is Mn? It's manganese. So these are the oxidizing agents uh, which are used to oxidize alcohols. So now we are moving towards the models of molecules. And uh, here we will discuss the different types that we can represent our molecules. I will take you to another website uh, shortly and I will show you different structures of the molecules on the basis of the models uh, that we will study here in these slides. Introduction, uh, we have uh, a definition. A molecule is a group of two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. Importance of understanding more molecular structure. Why do we need to understand this? Uh, this is the fundamental question that we should ask uh, whenever we are trying to uh, learn something new. So molecular structure uh, determines uh, the properties and behaviors of substances. Uh, such as their reactivity, solubility, and boiling point. Okay, so if you look at the molecular structure, you will be able to tell that, okay, this molecule will dissolve in water or this molecule will not dissolve in water, or you will predict the, uh, the reactivity that, okay, 
and now I can understand the structure of this molecule. Uh, I know that how this molecule will react, right? And uh, by looking at the structure, we can also predict that what will be the boiling point of the molecule. As I just explained in, in the case of alcohols, uh, if you remember, I told you guys that whenever uh, the, uh, the number of carbon atoms are increasing, when we increase the number of carbon atoms, what happens is that the, the boiling point increases, right? So this is how we can relate that what will happen to um, the, the boiling point or the reactivity of the alcohol. So the first model that we are trying to understand is that a ball and stick model. And uh, the description of ball and stick model, how a uh, uh, ball and stick model it works, uh, a model that uses balls uh, to represent atoms and sticks to represent chemical bonds. And what is the advantage of uh, the ball and stick model? It shows the three dimensional arrangement of atoms and bonds easy to visualize and understand, okay? So this is how we, um, we, we depict or we represent the structures of atoms. The atoms are represented by balls and the bonds are represented by sticks. I will, I will show you the picture of the, uh, the ball and stick model shortly on the website. So now we have space filling model. What happens to uh, the space filling model? In the space filling model, uh, the, the, the atoms, they, they, they take the shape, they, they take the entire shape of uh, this, they cover the area, right? They, they cover the entire area uh, so that you can see that, okay, this molecule has a bigger size, this molecule has a smaller size. So this is how we use the space filling models. A model uh, that represents atoms uh, as spheres uh, of different sizes depending on their size and chemical properties. So we can sometimes make different colors to those atoms as well. So advantages of the space filling model shows the relative sizes of atoms and how they are packed together uh, in a molecule. So now let me take you to, uh, to a website and uh, show you the space filling model and uh, another model, which is a ball and stick model. Okay, so it's loading in a while, so we can uh, move to our next slide. So when it is loaded, I will share it with you. So a wireframe, what is a wireframe model? A wireframe uh, model uh, description, a model that represents bonds as lines and atoms as points in space. Uh, we will see that as well in a while. Uh, it is loading, it takes some time uh, in order to load. So advantages of the uh, wireframe model, it uses uh, useful for illustrating the geometry and symmetry of the molecules, easy to modify and manipulate on a computer. So we have this website, this uh, very effective website that we use uh, for ball and stick model. So molecular dynamics and simulations. Now we have another uh, model that we use in order to, to explain the shapes of the molecules and uh, we call it the molecular dynamics simulator. It is a program, it is a software that, you, that we install on a, our computer. And uh, when we type in the name of the molecule, it will give us the structure. 
So this is how uh, the molecular dynamics uh, simulator, it works. So it is taking some time. Let me show you the ball and stick model. Uh, picture would be good, yes. I have this picture here. Okay, so if you look here, uh, this is a ball and stick model. Uh, you can see that we have uh, different uh, colors of atoms and these atoms are arranged. Uh, and these sticks, you can see here, the sticks, the gray color, they are, they are, they are representing our bonds. So this, so, and this is a double bond here, as you can see that two sticks are connected uh, between, the two, between the two atoms. So this is how, uh, a, a ball and stick model is represented. So what are the advantages of the, the molecular dynamics and simulation? It provides detailed information on the behavior of molecules, can predict how molecules will react in different uh, conditions. So now another uh, uh, model that we use to uh, depict or, or explain the shapes of molecules that is the electron density map. Let me show you the electron density map as well. Okay, while well, it's loading, uh, we can continue with our slide. Uh, in the end, I will I will show it to you that how the uh, the 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 electron density it works. So, in the electron density map, uh, a three dimensional map that shows the distribution of electrons uh, in a molecule. What are the advantages of the electron density map? Shows the location and density of electrons can be used to calculate properties such as the electrostatic potential and molecular orbitals. So what happens is that, for example, if, if, we, have, if we are uh, using electron density model to explain uh, the structure of alcohol, so where we have oxygen, it will be shown in green color, right? Because uh, the oxygen is the point where uh, the electrons uh, are condensed. Uh, the electrons electrons have been pulled. So this is why we can say that the area around the oxygen atom will be in red or green color, right? And where the electron density is low, uh, that area is represented by the blue color. So this is how the electron uh, density, uh, the, the, the electron density model, it works. So now we are uh, entering the, uh, the third uh, topic, uh, for today's uh, today's lecture, that is hydrocarbons. And uh, what are hydrocarbons? Hydrocarbons are basically the organic compounds, and uh, they have uh, hydrogen and carbon in their structure. And uh, what are organic compounds? Organic compounds are uh, those compounds uh, that contain carbon and its derivatives. And and the other type of compounds that we have are uh, inorganic compounds. So I hope uh, this has been recalled. So now we are ready to understand hydrocarbons. So uh, the introduction, uh, the definition of hydrocarbons, uh, hydrocarbons are, are organic compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen atoms. As I explained to you guys that uh, the, uh, the hydrocarbons, as the name indicates, hydro means hydrogen and carbons, uh, carbon means uh, carbon atom, right? So these are the molecules that contain hydrogen and uh, oxygen. So hydrocarbons, what, are, what is the importance of hydrocarbons? Hydrocarbons are the basis for many uh, important fuels and chemicals used in industry and everyday life. 
so now we are going to classify what is the classification of organic compounds. Uh, hydrocarbons are classified by the type of bond uh, between carbon atoms and whether the molecule is uh, cyclic or acyclic. Uh, or examples, we have alkanes, we have alkenes. Uh, these are acyclic compounds. Uh, cyclic compounds means that they, it forms circles an acyclic compound means that it, it is a straight chain compound. Alkanes, alkenes and alkynes, they are acyclic molecules and uh, cyclic hydrocarbons, uh, we have benzene uh, that can form ring shaped structures. So what are alkanes? Alkanes are hydrocarbons that contain uh, only a single bonds uh, between uh, carbon atoms. So all the bonds in alkanes, they have, uh, they have a single bond. And uh, what are uh, the properties of alkanes? Typically they have low reactivity, low boiling points, and are generally not very soluble in water. Uh, why is that? Uh, why alkanes, uh, they do not show reactivity? It is because uh, all the bonds are, are, are satisfied. The carbon ha has, is connected with the four different types of atoms, or it can be uh, connected to similar atoms, but it, uh, or the, it, the atoms are attached. There is no double bond. So that is why it cannot react. So the alkanes, uh, they are also called uh, saturated hydrocarbons. And why are they called saturated hydrocarbons? It is because that you cannot add any more uh, hydrogen atoms uh, in the now we are moving towards alkenes. Uh, alkenes are hydrocarbons that contain one or more carbon carbon double bond. So alkene, alkenes are the hydrocarbons that contain a double bond between a carbon-carbon. The properties of alkenes more reactive than alkenes uh, due to the presence of a double bond can undergo addition reactions and have uh, higher boiling points than alkenes. So I hope uh, uh, this is clear and you guys are getting it. So what is the difference between alkene, alkenes and alkenes? Alkene have a single bond and alkenes have a double bond. And uh, then we have uh, alkynes. Alkynes, it, it contains a triple bond. Alkynes are hydrocarbons that contain one or more carbon-carbon uh, triple bonds. In alkenes, uh, we had a single bond. In alkenes, we have a double bond. And in alkynes, we have a a triple bond. So alkenes are hydrocarbons that contain one or more a carbon bond. So it can have one triple bond or it, it can also have more than one triple bonds. So this point you need to remember. So what are the properties of alkynes? So alkynes are less reactive than alkenes due to the presence of a triple bond, but more reactive than alkenes and have higher uh, boiling points than alkene. Alkenes. So why uh, do we say that alkynes are low? Uh, have uh, alkynes have a low reactivity? It is because the alkynes, uh, the, the bonds are closer, right? So the when we have a triple bond, so the space between the two atoms is minimized, and that is why it cannot react properly. So another type of uh, hydrocarbons, we have a cyclic hydrocarbons. What are the cyclic hydrocarbons? Uh, cyclic
Okay, I think the connection is back. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, I was explaining cyclic compounds. So cyclic hydrocarbons. Uh, that's okay, I need to share the screen again, I guess. So it is taking some time to load. Uh, the screen is still loading. So anyhow, we were discussing uh, um, the cyclic carbons. So uh, I was explaining that cyclic hydrocarbons are hydrocarbons uh, that contain a closed ring of, of uh, carbon atoms. So properties of cyclic hydrocarbons can be aromatic or non-aromatic with aromatic compounds having unique uh, stability uh, and reactivity. Okay, so the screen has been shared. So cyclic compounds, uh, it can make uh, rings, uh, and the and the example are aromatic compounds that contain uh, benzene rings, and it has a unique stability and reactivity. So uh, just like in our previous class, uh, we discussed isomerism in uh, the uh, transition metal complexes. So here. Uh, we also understand that we have uh, isomerism. Isomerism is also a part of hydrocarbons. So the definition of isomerism, uh, it has uh, uh, the molecules with a different uh, structural formula, but uh, with the same uh, molecular formula. So isomerism is the phenomenon where molecules have the same chemical formula, but have a different structures and properties. So examples of isomer isomerism in hydrocarbons, we have structural isomers, we have stereoisomers, and we have uh, different types of uh, positional isomers. So nomenclature of hydrocarbons, uh, the description of the IUPAC naming system for hydrocarbons, the IUPAC system uses prefixes and suffixes uh, to indicate the number and the type of carbon-carbon bonds and any substituents present on the molecule. Okay, and uh, let me show you the different types of uh, the, the, the naming patterns in, in hydrocarbons as well. <clears throat> 